Hi everyone and welcome to the Eastern Pacific Workshop on Hangout. My name is Katie Croft Bell and I'm the Executive Vice President of the Ocean Exploration Trust. I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to the workshop that was held in December and then we'll jump straight into the workshop results and discussion. So let's go to a quick introduction on the history of ocean exploration and where we stand today. So about 15 years ago, President Clinton convened a panel for ocean exploration, and the resulting report mandated that a significant amount of money, up to $75 million, be dedicated to ocean exploration for a national effort here in the United States, and that the oceans obviously need to be explored for a variety of reasons. And since then, um, there have been several presidential panels and congressional reports on the fact that ocean exploration needs to be a high priority for the United States. So coming out of those reports, there have been several workshops, five in fact, um, the most recent of which was just held in December. And those workshops have addressed a variety of different topics. The first one being the technological requirements for vessels of exploration. So what types of tools do we need to be able to explore the oceans. And then the last four have been more focused on different regions around the world, starting in 2007 with the Pacific, followed by the Atlantic Ocean in 2011, most recently um, the 2012 and 2014 workshops on the Caribbean and the Eastern Pacific Ocean. Um, reports on all of those um, workshops can be found um, and we can send out the links to everyone if you're interested in seeing those. And um, coming out of those workshops, then we have two vessels of exploration. The first to be launched was the Okeanos Explorer. The Okeanos is a NOAA vessel, so it's federally owned and operated. And the second of which is the exploration vessel Nautilus, which is owned and operated by a nonprofit called the Ocean Exploration Trust. Now, because they have different owners, they have slightly different modes of operation, but fundamentally, Nautilus and Okeanos both are similarly equipped with seafloor mapping and remotely operated vehicle capabilities, and they both have very similar missions, and that's to go to poorly understood or completely unexplored places around the world and to start to um, ask those questions that um, we don't even know yet to ask. So for specifications on both of the ships, um, one of the places where you can find that information is in the 2012 supplement to the March issue of Oceanography Magazine. The link is listed right here. There are also a few other places, including the workshop presentations that were presented in 2014, as well as on the um, Okeanos Explorer website and the Ocean Exploration Trust website. So there's a lot of information out there. If you can't seem to find us, let us know, and we um, can send more links out to everybody. So those, both of those ships and both of those prog programs have been responding to all of the workshops that have been held on identifying locations to explore around the world. And so um, coming to the most recent one on the Eastern Pacific, we were focused on identifying first key questions about the Eastern Pacific across all fields of oceanography. So what are the big questions um, that face the Eastern Pacific in terms of archaeology, biology, geology, chemistry, and physics, and then working on from there to identify unexplored and poorly understood locations in the Eastern Pacific that can begin to address those key questions. Nicole is going to go into more detail on how that process worked and what the results are, and um, everybody should have the link to the draft report so you can see that in, um, in a lot more detail. And now the purpose of today is to provide another opportunity for those that both were able to attend the workshop and those were not able to attend the workshop to provide additional information about the key questions and high priority target areas um, that was not captured in the draft report. So we've put together as much as we can from the notes that were taken, but I'm sure there are a lot of gaps and people have already started to comment on the report, which is wonderful and we really appreciate all of your feedback. 
And um, secondly, to identify whether or not we are missing any very important key questions or target areas. And we really want you to um, focus on these two topics when we go into the breakout sessions and um, also to um, come to consensus as a group on any um, major additions to the report. We want you to definitely think bigger than just your own white paper. Um, you'll see that in some cases the target areas overlapped with um, the locations of some of the white papers. In some cases they didn't because we're really encouraging everyone to sort of think beyond your own um, your own field of research and your own expertise and to, to get to the um, bigger questions that, that are, uh, I'm sure, abounding in the Eastern Pacific. So those are the goals for today. And um, this is a quick agenda on how it's all going to um, flow. Immediately following this, Nicole Reynaud, uh, the Director of Science Operations for the Ocean Exploration Trust, is going to